Hi, this is Madeline for Vivi Wolf. Thank you so much for checking out my tutorial today. I'm going to be going over the frame by frame animation process that I use for Adobe Photoshop Creative Cloud 2014. Um, if you have a different version of the software or if you're working with maybe something else, hopefully this will kind of transfer over into your system and you can at least walk away with a few tips. So before we get started on our own GIF, which is what I hope we can accomplish, um, I want to go over some basics, which would be showing you the uh, different things that come into play for animation in Photoshop. And the first one and most important thing, well, arguably, is the timeline, which you can set the duration of each frame, you can organize the frames, and you can also group the frames. So if I was to scrub through this timeline, you'll see I have multiple frames popping up into play. <coughs> Excuse me. And each frame corresponds directly to a layer. So I clicked over here my text group. Layer 2 is selected and sure enough that is in my text group. So if we go into a new GIF. And we see our timeline. If you do not see a timeline all you have to do is go up to the top, select window, timeline, and it should pop up. Create it and then go to this little button, this drop down menu on the top right of the timeline dock and go to set timeline frame rate and go to 12. Great. I'm going to relabel this as background so that way we always remember this is just our background and we don't want to be drawing on it. And I'm going to create our first layer which means our first frame. If I zoom in you'll see that this frame goes as long as our background which is over the length that it needs to be. So all you have to do is drag it back. Now it runs for one frame. If you set a new layer, you're like, okay, great, did the first frame, I need a new frame, and you go to new layer, you'll see that it sends it out and shoots it out all the way to that original timeline frame, or timeline length, which can be really frustrating if you're working with some uh, very complex projects. So instead of doing that, I find the workaround is easiest to simply just duplicate. And we'll duplicate it three times. Two, and three. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Man, just got this tickle in my throat. So now we have four frames that we can work with. Let's start with layer one. I'm going to go into maybe a... Let's go into, hmm, let's see, China marker? Sure. And I'm going to draw a face. So if we go into our layer copy 2 and if we were to draw all over this, you'll see it does not affect our first frame. So what I like to do is turn the opacity down for this first layer. And basically it's akin to what you would see with traditional hand-drawn animation. You would be doing a uh, drawing on top of either the previous frame or off of stencil or off of tracing paper. And so this is sort of a nice way to accommodate that factor. So if we go into our second frame and we just sort of trace over things a little bit more, and they don't have to be perfect. It's a nice thing about frame by frame animation. Things don't really have to be perfect unless you really want that uh, Snow White Disney look. <laughs> okay, great. And I'm going to make that one invisible. It's still there, but it's invisible. On to our third frame. Same old thing. And, you know, this is, like, really easy to just kind of get sloppy about, but if you get things too out of whack, then you'll definitely notice it. And if you haven't done frame by frame yet, I encourage you to just sort of play with that. Um, and to be aware of every single frame playing a very important role into the total picture and animation, of course. Um, but I am being pretty sloppy right now, so let's see if I can even just demonstrate that here. Great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stagger these frames one by one and they kind of look like a staircase. That's okay. I'm going to go back to layer one and turn up the opacity. Make sure all my other layers are turned on. 
And then finally, I'm going to reduce the size of this background to just the frames running because otherwise it would just run on a lot of white space and that would be no fun. All right, so here we go. We've got a four frame long animation that's just gonna continuously loop. So that's okay. It's not awful. You can see where my brush is thicker, possibly on, let's see if we can narrow it down. It's really thin on my first, and then it gets thicker and thicker. So my first one's pretty thick. Let's go back and edit it, make it a little bit, th or sorry, it's a little thin, and then make it a little bit thicker, and play this back and see if that, you know, you can still see a difference. It's flexing a bit, but again, this is to just demonstrate how uh, this sort of frame by frame looks. And so once you're happy with your animation, which you know, you can add colors, you can do whatever you want, like, let's add some, give him some hair. Yeah, hair. Go to our second frame, select it. And now I'm just eyeballing it, of course, because I'm not tracing. But I think that'll be okay. He might have some really messy, crazy hair. And finally, the last one. Select it, and... So if I was to play this one back, we got something like this. It's not awful. It's pretty okay. At least by my standards. And all you have to do from here is go into File, Save for Web. <coughs> Once this pops up, you can see we have preset as GIF, and we can do looping options forever. And then you select Save. Let's call this boy. So now if we go to our desktop, which is where I saved it, and we preview this, there you go. Your very own animated GIF, which is ready for Instagram. Of course, you have to abide by Instagram's rules of, I think, what, having a minimum of three seconds of video. So you might need to, you know, duplicate some layers and just let this play out a little bit longer. But in essence, that's uh, what I have to show for Adobe Photoshop. And um, again, I just kind of want to uh, reemphasize how fantastic it is to work in a software that really gives you some of these textures here that I'm looking at. And um, you can have something like this, or you could have something like this with text, or have something kind of like that, or like what we just did. So thanks so much for watching. Um, I hope it was helpful. Please let us know if you have any questions or if there's anything else you want us to look into. And uh, this is Madeline signing off for Ruby Wolf. Thanks so much, guys.